Australia have withstood a late New Zealand revival in tricky conditions on a historic night at Amy Park. Test match football is always special, but the first international for 2010 had extra significance because it marked the opening of Melbourne's magnificent new rectangular stadium. The $267 million arena was christened in a spectacular pre-match show enjoyed by a sellout crowd albeit one that was getting a thorough soaking. Formalities then gave way to the ferocity, and as per tradition, New Zealand threw down the gauntlet. Fittingly, the first response to that challenge came courtesy of a Melbourneian. Inglis just missed out on earning the honour of scoring the first try at Amy Park, but that wasn't nearly as painful as what his storm captain Cameron Smith endured. It was proving to be an eventful welcoming to their new home for Melbourne stars, and Billy Slater thought he'd been hit by a tram when Steve Matai belted him into the next millennium. Here it comes, a big bang, get that into your light knowledge. The heavy rain thwarted the attacking aspirations of both sides and the Aussies took any chance they could to pick up some points. Jamie Lyon from right in front makes no mistake. It looked like Jamie Lyon's penalty goal on the half hour mark might be the sole impression on the scoreboard in the first 40, but with 90 seconds before the break, Darren Lockyer's class shone through the mist. So with Morris etching his name into the history books, Australia had the edge at half-time. Not long after the resumption, Morris collected his double, which came six days after he grabbed a hat-trick for the Dragons, although this one should almost be credited to Sam Thiaday. Left side, flopping it out to Thiaday! Thiaday refusing to give in! Morris has scored! Morris has got his second try! Jamie Lyon defied the difficult conditions to slot the conversion and put the ruse up by two converted tries. Greg Inglis was causing massive headaches for the Kiwi defence, swatting them away like flies. But the tenacious NZers kept sticking to their task and with just over 10 minutes to go, their persistence was rewarded. There was a decoy run before Marshall, another one before Hawaii. Isaac Luke's miss from touch left New Zealand eight points adrift with time running out, but they weren't going to die wondering. So in the end, it was two tries apiece, and while the gallant Kiwis can derive some satisfaction from keeping Australia honest in front of almost 30,000 fans, it's the mighty kangaroos who get to keep the Trans-Tasman Trophy. David Rollins, Big Pond Sport.